so my name is Federica Gazzelloni. Uh, I am a statistician and actuary, and I've, I'm a freelancer um, um, towards data science. So I'm thinking um, in data analytics still, then we'll see in the next future. So I like these book clubs. I love them a lot because it's a good practice for speaking, talking with the others while learning. And um, uh, what else? I don't know. I make data visualization, I do modeling, and I, uh, I am a collaborator with the HME, um, with the University of Washington, and uh, I uh, take part to some, some studies and research. So this is all for me. What about you? So if, if you want, would like to introduce yourself, maybe? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Esmeralda. I am based in Reading in the UK. I am here because I start um, a PhD program at the University of Reading. My project is about to understand how the vegetation of the past responded to past climate changes. So I think that definitely I am going to um, need to, yeah, um, run some models and definitely in R or yeah. Indeed, the only language I know is R, so <laughs> that's why I am here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, me too. Me. I know just R. Yeah. Well, hi, hi so, to you both. Yeah. My name is Brandon. Um, I'm a, I guess I'm a plant physiologist by training. Um, I work in a vertical farming operation. Hence the mask. <laughs> I'm at work. Uh, as far as the time goes, this is this is not too bad for me. I like mornings. Um, but yeah, I I yeah I started learning R about uh, ten years ago, or you know, well, twelve years ago maybe. Um, mainly from a data visualization standpoint. Like I'm not really a statistician so much, but it's. Um, it's definitely a kind of a weak point for me, the modeling parts. And so I'm really interested in this book club to kind of build the build that skill set a little better. Oh, and I used to live near Reading. I, I, I lived in Bra I lived in Bracknell, actually Benfield, if you know it. Oh, it's it's a nice place. I like it. Yeah. I haven't yeah. doing my time here. Yeah. So. I used to work at Jellet's Hill, just down the road at Syngenta. Okay, it's it's a quiet place. Yeah. Okay, that's a great place. Right. Um, by the way, I am I, I, biologist. I, I am not a statistician or something like that. I am biologist, but yeah, I want to to learn how to model with R. Okay, so Frederica, we're we're depending on you to tell us what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I lived in London as well, in the UK for, for about five years, one and a half years uh, first, and then for about four years after. So I went back to to Italy and then go back there. Uh, nice experience. Like Where are you from originally? Like what part of Italy? Rome. The oh, okay. Yeah. I'm from Mexico, from Mexico City. I'm from Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> so the Midwest. I, I've been to Rome once, but uh, my best, the best trip that I had in in Italy was in Puglia. I uh, like the, the agricultural region was the best one to me. So nice place, nice place, very good, nice everything, food and uh, the weather, and you know for holidays, one of the best places. You absolutely. You, you, yeah, you have a beautiful sea and mm, so nice day. Uh, so um, whatever. Mm, I uh, I love modeling. Uh, you never stop learning doing it. So that's lots of new resources, new things uh, always need to be updated. Uh, this book I've already followed some uh, chapters and take taken part to one of the more than, than the one, but I, I've uh, participated to the last part of the book, the uh, chapters, 
So I wanted to to start that again to to have a, uh, a complete uh, overview of the data modelings, uh, syntax and techniques, because I, I think they're very nice. The what, what I can say the the bit the most important difference with difference within uh, using caret for example, so the classical function uh, for for modeling and tidy modeling is that you can set uh, more parameters so you can adjust uh, the model on your needs uh, it's a bit more like uh, verbose as a syntax instead of the classical uh, functions for, for modeling but then you can inside uh, set some parameters that will be useful for you to focus on the best model. This is the, the thing. What else? Uh, I don't know. Um, the, this is the fourth court. If we are okay with the time, we can uh, keep going with the time, otherwise we arrange different time. Uh, it's, we divide the chapter, I don't know, you, you, did, did, did any of you already taken part to some other book clubs within Art for Data Science? No, I haven't yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm from the, uh, what's the name? Um, mm -mm. It's called... R for data science, I think the basic yeah. one, the cohort six, I think. Okay, um, so the, the procedure is that uh, we divide, so you, you choose a chapter or more than one uh, that, that you are interested in and you would like to uh, talk about and um, uh, so put your name down uh, both if you want on the Google Sheet uh, in Slack or in the um, uh, GitHub page. Uh, if you want to, I can show you how to do it if you don't know how to do it. And then uh, um, just explain the others in the book club what is uh, about uh, what is talking about, what is saying, if you, you can use the data, the data that they use in the chapter, or use your data, if you have any other uh, things that you want to uh, maybe uh, do experiment with using tidy models, that would be uh, interesting as well. This is something that has already been done. If you, there is a, a YouTube channel with all the videos for the previous courts. So uh, many things have been done with different data sets, all interesting things. Uh, so the book, uh, I'm going to share some something just for as an introductory um, day. And then we start deciding which, which uh, chapter you would like to do. Uh, I do the others. Uh, so le let's see. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the Slack uh, on the bar here on top. You find all the information. Then uh, the. Uh, this is the, the book, uh, uh, I don't know if you uh, have seen it, of course, this is quite, uh, now there's 21 chapters, and uh, so the, the first chapters are more introductory chapters to the con uh, con um, consistent part, which is the, uh, the last, uh, it involves the selection of the best model and using more than one model, uh, select uh, setting parameters and everything. So the um, uh, the first part is about uh, 
setting, uh, understanding what uh, models are, um, have some um, introductory uh, things about uh, modelings, and, uh, and then uh, something about the data, uh, data sets that will be used inside the, the book. Uh, this, uh, as I said, uh, it's very interesting. You have also um, a YouTube channel for uh, uh, Julia Silje, uh, one of the authors, uh, where she uh, each week has posted some, some examples for modeling. And they are, are very interesting for understanding tidy models because she does live, co live coding and they are quite smoothly to follow and you really grab the thing. Um, uh, each, each video contains different uh, type of modelings, uh, so that would be nice. Uh, I also uh, had a look at the, um, at the things just to give you a little overview. Uh, we are going to uh, Resampling, model comparison, tuning, grid search, iterative search. This is all, uh, all the things that I've said about uh, this is not just classical using the, the function for modeling, but it's more like um, uh, parametrizing uh, your model, setting the parameters uh, with um, some different uh, kinds of resampling um, and tuning parameters, uh, searching for the best parameters with a grid search, and then uh, so on. So, in general, uh, the model um, model classification uh, it's it's a bit like it's like, it's like a, a challenge because uh, there's many similar things that can be used but they are uh, just slightly different and they can release uh, um, a value which is not, uh, can be different from, from another, but not necessarily wrong. So uh, when uh, mm, th there's different type of models and they share two important characteristics like summarize data, interpolate data, and the model can be descriptive. Uh, that means that you um, have an idea of the trend of your data and the identification of the differences within data and the assumption are, are obtained with the application of theoretical assumptions and the analysis of the model residuals, so such as the regression line, which is used to discover some trend. Then there are inferential models, which are to make hypotheses and uh, um, uses assumptions such as statistically significant. Uh, you have p-values, confidence interval, posterior probabilities, and then there are predictive models which are to produce predictions, structure of the prediction, which is made to forecast trends for new data. So these are more or less the steps that we will follow within the book. So we started with descriptive uh, data models, then we make some inferential, uh, and then we finally predict, and again, choose which one is the best model. So these are all the things that uh, we will go through uh, the book. Uh, there are different examples. Um, I, I want, uh, I don't know, just interrupt me if, if I don't know, you have any questions, you want to um, say something, just inter interrupt me. Um, so we will go through uh, understanding the difference within supervised and unsupervised learning. We, uh, the supervised uh, is a uh, model with an outcome variable with a characteristic model mode 
such a, and, and in that case we use linear regression or neural networks and they are subdivided in regression and classification and then there are unsupervised models and this is um, to have just like a box of numbers they are matrix it's a matrix we do not have an outcome but we work through this matrix to understand what are the connections within these numbers if we can group them uh, in some some way uh, so th there's many i don't know i don't like to annoy <laughs> Um, there's many classification uh, and a challenge that I found is to decide for which model to use based on the, on the data at this position. This is still a challenge. So you have a model family, a model form, uh, some fitted models, um, and um, you need to consider uh, all the differentiations uh, within your data and then the opportunity that you got within the model models available for uh, making inference on your data so what else i can say um let, uh, Frederica, do you know yeah. do you know what it means by model family can you say a little more on that if you if you know yeah, for, let's say for example, uh, we um, we can it just use, said neural networks. It was the only thing that it said. So let's say let's let's uh, start with an example. Let's say that we uh, want to um, we have an outcome. Okay, um, we can have two type of outcomes: uh, a numeric outcome or um, um, a not numeric outcome, which means, I don't know, like, uh, like a, it's like a factor, a like classification, a, right? Yeah, classification, uh, like a categorical variable. Okay, we have uh, two, two, uh, two different data sets, uh, or a same data set, but we have, uh, we can make two type of inferences within this data set, which are one is numeric, so like, say, I don't know, uh, what would be the most probable level of selling, uh, I don't know, some something, uh, or uh, a categorical outcome, which means um, um, like, like a tree versus a bush. Yeah, or, or maybe just the market will go up or will go down, for example. It's, it's like um, uh, understanding that those are two different things and one is uh, uh, belonging to a regression problem and the other one is a classification model. So they are, uh, for example, two different families. It's uh, the model family di divided by two, uh, the, the, the most important uh, differentiation uh, when we use uh, um uh, numeric and or quantitative outcomes uh we have a regression model when we use um categorical or qualitative outcome so we want to achieve a qualitative outcome so we are making a classification so this is the main uh, differentiation then we have linear models and non-linear models uh, and this is another differentiation so uh where did i uh like the the model family uh, the linear model or model based clustering like neural networks um, we can consider the one which is linear and one which is not linear. And we make some inference about this, uh, looking at the residuals. We look at the residuals and then decide if a model is linear or not linear. And then, um, then we specify the model form uh, and say, 
for example, we specify a priori um, by the model selection procedure. What would be uh, the, the, the most suitable one? because of the, the nature of our the, the data set that we have at disposition. Then uh, we fit the model, and that means uh, we optimize some criterion for given data and estimate the parameters. So we are going through all, all these things. On top of that, uh, we also do some data analytics so we take the data at disposition, we do some manipulation and see what, how we can arrange this data in a way that can be used to, to modeling, for modeling. And this is called pre-processing um, stage of the modeling. The pre-processing, uh, because when you, uh, we use some, uh, within tidy models there are many, there are not many, oh, there, there are some packages uh, connected with tidy models that we load uh, um, with it. And the pre-processing part include uh, the recipe, the resample, uh, and then uh, the parsnip. That if we, in some cases, we use yardstick as well, not all the times. So the pre-processing part is the manipulation of the data, the data set that we have. So once we have decided which is, uh, which is the, the, the model that we want to use, uh, we set up the data ready for modeling, making a recipe. And this recipe is like uh, using a formula, okay? But then it contains some steps, functions, and these are for um, wrangling, data wrangling. So then we'll see uh, what, what they do. Uh, and so we do, then after we had some pre-processing. Yeah. sorry to interrupt. Um, in, in the recipe, I've not used recipes myself. Does, when you say like data functions, those functions are similar to those in dplyr? in terms of like mutate and select and all those, or, or is it beyond that? What, what, what do you mean by that? It's exactly the same, our verbs, but they start with step and underscore, uh, like step dummy, for example, it's a function that makes all your categorical predictors uh, in a way that they are numerical, uh, zero and one, so they just zero and one, they are one when they are present in the, so they, when you apply that function, all the matrix transform in a way that those variables, those, predi those predictors become numerical, for example, and then there's many steps functions uh, that we, 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 we will go through them. Uh, okay, always, I'm, just put, I'm getting ahead of you, sorry. <laughs> That's a problem. No, that's not a problem. So then we do some exploratory data analysis. That means making visualizations of the data that we have settled for for, and then we see uh, what what they they say about the data. And then we do some feature engineering, uh, which means apply the the recipe to um, some step function, and then uh, modeling and then evaluated the model. Okay, let me uh, answer that. Uh, uh, when we do modeling, we use a parsnip syntax in tidy models. Then we will see what is that. And then we evaluate the models with some, uh, the classical uh, result, uh, the RMC, the ROC, and the o <laughs> Uh, the A and the curve, um, and we, we see all the criterion for for understanding this thing. So what else I can say? Uh, as usual, we do split uh, the data uh, in some uh, parts. Then 
um, apply the receipt. When we apply the receipt, you know, the receipt it can be done whatever you want in the way that you like. And this, it, it will affect your prediction. So if the, the, the pre-processing part is very important because uh, uh, if you uh, set up the data uh, in a certain way, the prediction can be affected by it. So uh, not also the, the, the choice of a model can affect your uh, result, but even the, the formula, of course. Okay, so these are the step functions. I have a step, underscore, and then some other uh, verbs here. And uh, what, this is the processing part. So this book goes through these uh, models, uses these models in particular. And uh, as we see, we do have two main differentiation, classification and regression. And the most used one is the linear regression, the one we is used in classical correct. Uh, with the LM function. Uh, here you can set different engines and um, uh, this, this will be just a, a regression type of model, not a classification. And then you can, I don't know, do many things like uh, we will go through resampling um resampling methods we list all the resampling methods uh like uh cross validation repeated cross validation leave one out monte carlo validation set that we will go through what is a validation set when it's used and then bootstrapping rolling forecast uh, what else? Then we evaluate the performance. And um, we will make a hypothesis to say what is best. We will see Bayesian methods. And then this is a nice part, which, which is tuning. So we, uh, this is, is where uh, tidy models uh, is, the, is the reason for which is very useful because you can tune in your parameters and setting all the things. Uh, to, to you. It's like you go inside the function of your modeling and you set some, uh, some set, set the parameters. So you like searching for the best with a grid search and then um, uh, again, you know, try to set it in a way that you can find uh, the most suitable ones. I think it's everything uh, that we will go through as well as the, that we will um, uh, compare more than one model. Uh, the, there's some, uh, there's one chapter that still need to be completed. So maybe when, when we, within time, uh, within the weeks, uh, the our book club, we will find the, the that the chapter has uh, been made. What well, else I can show you? I don't know if you have any questions. There's uh, more than one website. Uh, I don't know if you have seen it, um, for tidy modelings. This is the book. Um, okay, this is the book. And then there is um, the models dot mm, org
where you can find some uh, more information and there's some uh, extra examples um, you see there's if you do like learn Um, and then there is a, like perform a statistical analysis, create robust models, tune, compare, work with your models. And these are as well more uh, examples. Uh, if you need more um, information when we do a chapter, uh, you, you find everything uh, here to, to, to follow through or then you can just like get started uh, and uh, here you find the build a model and there is um, a certain data set to use and it uh, guides you to analyzing this data set to making a model uh, I found this very helpful uh, for some uh, for understanding some chapter. And then there is the Julia Silje, uh, as I said, um, YouTube channel. Which is uh, very, very useful uh, because she, if, on each video, she presented uh, uh, a new way for modeling using uh, sometimes the Tidy Tuesday data set, but uh, other times different. Um, uh, I, there, there is she. Okay, so this is the, the website I suggest you to, to look at as well. That is very helpful. Um I think uh, it's all for me. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions, but I think as an introductory uh, introduction for our book club, but this, this would be, uh, if you, do, do you need any help with tab? Maybe. I'm sorry, I missed some of that. Um, I don't know if it was my connection or yours, but you said, do you need any what? Uh, arranging the notes within, with GitHub. Uh, oh, yeah. so where, where are the notes on GitHub? GitHub. I think we are losing you, Federica. Okay, it's not just me. All right. I was worried it was me. <laughs> oh. We'd lost her. <laughs> okay. Her connection. Yeah. Ah. Look here now. You're back. You're muted, though. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I dropped the meeting. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was asking you what the what the GitHub was, um, and I think you were going to say it, but I I didn't uh, okay, I didn't I catch it. I show you I show you what is the GitHub. So we this is the uh, tidy modeling. And this is oh, it's the at GitHub. the top in the notes. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Repo, um, yeah, okay, I see it. Okay, so this is the, uh, the GitHub, and uh, I've asked if you need any help, because the, the procedure is, you see this um, uh, tidy modeling uh, to you can uh, put your name down here or in the um, uh, Google Sheet that I've put as well on top of the uh, this Slack 
um, for the, the book up page. And then how to use this uh, is to, uh, you need to fork, uh, you click fork this book club and uh, it, do, do you have an account with GitHub? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. So you click fork and it fork uh, the, the repository then you open R and uh, uh, like set a um, new project. Do you know how to do that? Actually, I've not done that for a long time. So let's let's carry on. <laughs> okay. So I uh, I show you. For example, I close this project. Uh, and then um, I make a new project, version control. Oh, I did too fast. Version control. And then uh, git. Ne then um, you have this uh, uh, repository URL uh, and you put the... Which is uh, your fork, right? Yeah, exactly. It's my fork. So, um, for example, uh, this is my uh, GitHub, and I go to tidy modeling with R. So this is my fork. I take the address and put it here. Then, if I copy this little part. It goes automatically uh, as a project direct, uh, directory name. Then you choose uh, where you want to put it inside your machine with browse and create the project. You click here and it creates the project. I, uh, I don't do that because I've already done it. Uh, uh, what uh, is actually does is downloading all the content of the repo in uh in inside your r and so you have all these things loaded and then um as we the, the note this is a fork uh this is the port port so uh the notes have already been made but we are suggested to um integrate these notes so you in for your presentation, you, you can do, you are free absolutely to do whatever you want. You can do a presentation differently. You can use uh, uh, R Markdown. Uh, you can make a modification on, on these notes. And then uh, when, do you know how to use um, R Markdown? Maybe yeah. Okay, you just uh, pick one of the uh, the notes here. Let's say that we do chapter three. Okay, I close the other ones. So we do chapter three. I need it because it's already been made, you know? So I need it. So I see what they have done it previously. I see if I like it, if I don't like it, if I want to make the difference. Um, see, these are the notes. What is it? This is not. So, should be this one here. So now it's it's not working. Did I see this? What is? Okay, need. And um, if you want to make any changes, you can just change it, change it, and uh, then uh, push. Uh, so first, uh, let's say that these are the notes. You look at the notes. Uh, you see the chapter. You say, "I like to add, I don't know, something," or maybe let's say that you want to just add some some information. You can add some information inside these notes 
or at the, at the end of the, the, the chapter, at the end of these notes. And then uh, you have different options. Uh, and then when you, if you change this thing, what you can do is um, com uh, select the file here. You see that you have settled, uh, you have a new tab uh, when uh, uh, you have set uh, the, the project. And this tab has a commit, pull and push. So you select which is the file that you, where you have made uh, modifications with in, in it. You select it and then commit. When you commit, uh, it's like a window appear with a message. You write what what are your changes, like, um, I don't know, like cohort four, uh, chapter three or something like that. And then you first pull down because maybe there is some modification in the uh, in the original repo. So I suggest you to pull down first uh, and then push. But I forgot to, to tell you something, which is one of the most important things otherwise. So you need to uh, set up um, a branch before committing. Because when when you um, fork the the repository uh, and download all the the content, you find yourself with a main branch. Okay, for pushing changes into the original uh, repository, you need to make a new branch. So you just click here and say new branch, add a new branch name. Uh, say um, create and uh, it creates uh, a new branch I have this branch my branch is chapter 15 for example and um, so it's like a mirror of your main branch uh, where you can make changes and uh, from here you can push it to the original one with commit and then push. When you push it, the original, uh, so the the owner, so the owner, so the, the original repository, which is uh, not this, but this one here, receive your push. Um, what is it? Okay, as a pull request. So then the maintainers uh, of the, the repository will look at the difference. Uh, in particular, John is the um, uh, responsible for, for this thing. And uh, uh, approve or, or not uh, the, the changes that you have pushed. Yes? Yeah. yeah. So as soon as you as soon as you push it, it goes back to the original repo. It doesn't go to just yours. You don't have to create another push to the original repo or whatever. You need to uh, make a new branch. Yeah. Uh, and then commit and push, and it goes directly to the original repo. Okay. Then the I haven't done too much yet, but. Uh, the difference is when you uh, change something on the repo, on the original repo, then you, you need to click twice, two buttons, which means one is that you co are committing the change and then you are um, submitting an issue. This is when you make the change directly in the repo uh, website. It's not when you're pushing from, from your R. Okay. Any questions, just ask. Uh, okay. No, the, this is new for me indeed. I didn't know that we could push content into the original one. Yeah. Yeah, this, I, I need to try. Yeah, you can do that. 
uh, you can uh, some some uh, some people have uh, completely changed uh, the notes, like made made new notes, and then without uh, pushing them, they have allocated in a folder which is called other inside the repo. Okay, so and, and this is uh, even uh, one more uh, another solution. Here, there is a other folder, a folder named other. Where is it? Okay. And um, inside, you, you can uh, set up a new folder. And uh, here, the, there is, um, for example, some uh, others work, some other course. Okay, they, they didn't make the, made the, the change in uh, but but they they did make uh, completely different notes for them to talk uh, and everything uh, and then position it in the other folder maybe in the future that's this is what i heard the even this node will be um, integrated uh, assembled yeah integrated um this is uh, any any questions just ask uh, you can make a, a, um, a I don't know a presentation with a different tool if you so so what how do we how do we uh, what do we do going forward um, is this is it weekly or or Bi week every other week or what what do we do in terms of meeting okay um the the, the meetings are set for between uh, one each week okay so uh, each week is it's uh, the, there is a meeting uh but it's up to us uh how how to handle it so if we want to like Mm, I don't know, take more time for a chapter and have uh, a session for exercises for, I don't know, for practicing some of that. It's up to us. So we can do whatever we want. Uh, yeah. In yeah. In general, you, you, you have uh, a meeting each week at this time, the same time. Uh, one of us uh, uh, present a chapter. Uh, not necessarily be an expert. So we are going through the chapter, we're reading and see understanding, sharing experience about the thing. Uh, that's all. Let me see. That's okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. I, put, I was just making sure I put it in my calendar <laughs> so it's available. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Great. I think it's all for today. Okay. Thanks so much for leading. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to have to dive dive back into that first chapter because uh, definitely the the models themselves are kind of more my weak point. But um, I'm hoping to learn. So let's let's go. Okay. So then we we will see who who is the one uh, starting for with, with the first chapter. We, you, you think about it. Yeah, um, I might be able to do the dplyr stuff. I'm not, I'm not bad at that, and the and ggplot too as well. But I imagine all of us are pretty good at that, so <laughs> may not be so helpful. But uh, right. okay. But anyway, thank you. Yeah, Wait. thanks a lot. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Take care. Bye. Bye.